Welcome back to the Ingrain Workshop. I'm Rick, and in today's video, we're going to be showing you how to install a wood rack. Uh, I want to take a moment and thank all the new subscribers to the channel. And if you're new to the channel and DIY projects is something that you're into, then please hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. So let's get started on building a wood rack for a workshop. Okay, so this is what the um, existing wood rack looked like uh, prior to renovating the workshop. Um, as you can see, there is a ton of hardwood on this wood rack. Um, I built this wood rack back in 2010 and literally have not had any issues with it at all. And it's probably been fully loaded uh, since I built it. Um, this wood rack has been holding all this hardwood for the past 10 years. I haven't had any failure whatsoever. Um, so, you know, I, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, but also, you know, with that saying goes, you know, you can always build a better mousetrap. But in this case, I think just going with the existing wood rack and leaving the structural pieces in place is probably the way to go. Um, I'm not going to modify this at all. Um, I am going to take and um, the, the steel pipe, the half inch steel pipe that hold the actual hardwood, I am going to take those out, give them a fresh coat of paint, kind of clean them up, make them pretty, and that's about it. Um, but I will go over um, the installation process on how I actually built this um, 10 years ago when I uh, originally built uh, the workshop. So if only um, removing the wood was actually this fast, that'd be great. But uh, this is only due to the uh, editing. I try, trust me, I wish I could work this fast. Uh, it probably took me a couple of hours to, to get all the wood out and into the carport uh, the whole while while stepping over the, uh, the shop dog Dixie, uh, who was a big help, uh, as you can see in the video. Uh, but uh, once I got everything down, I could better assess the situation. And, uh, you know, the wood rack was fine. Uh, there was really nothing wrong with it. And that's why I opted to just go ahead and uh, basically renovate it uh, instead of replacing it. Okay, so here to the left is the vertical support that is fastened directly to the metal studs. And you'll see that uh, I'm using uh, pressure treated lumber, which I would recommend. And then I'm just using uh, metal self tapping screws with a one inch flat washer. I did use a Forstner bit and drill into the, the wood just so that the uh, flat washer sits flush uh, inside the, uh, the hole. Um, and then my spacing was roughly 12 inches to 15 inches on center all the way up the wall. So as you'll see, you'll see the uh, the uh, anchors that are approximately 12 to 15 inches on center and again those are drilled right into the uh, metal studs all the way up the wall and this seems to work well uh, like I said there were there were never any issues and then here you can see the actual holes that I drilled into the vertical supports uh, for the steel pipe uh, rods that actually hold the hardwood now these holes are drilled on 12 inch centers they're drilled, I believe, at a 12 degree angle, and they're, you know, approximately two to two and a half inches uh, deep uh, into the vertical support. Okay, so I'm starting to um, install uh, the wood rack. Um, what I've done is, uh, when I de demolished it, I left the vertical supports in place and installed the T111 siding around the vertical uh, two by pressure treated two by fours. Um, but I went ahead and pulled out all the uh, 12 inch, half inch uh, steel pipe that I had. Um, and this is an example of the existing pipe that I had. And now I'm just going in and putting a nice fresh coat of black paint and then starting to reinstall them in the holes. Um, I believe the holes are about a 12 to 15 degree angle. I'll show you here in a second. And the holes maybe penetrate into the two before. Um, you know, maybe inch and three quarters, two inches. Let me show you. Okay, so here are the, uh, the uh, horizontal supports. You can kind of see the angle there. Uh, again, it can be at any angle. You just want the, uh, the hardwood to be able to slope back toward the wall. You don't want the uh, hardwood to be able to uh, slide out or slide off. 
Um, you'll also notice a gap between the vertical uh, supports. Uh, that, that gap there in the middle is due to a horizontal metal stud that runs around the entire metal building. Your metal building might be a little different, but um, that did make uh, working with the vertical uh, supports a little bit easier. Um, I was able to just uh, put it in the drill press and set my drill press at the 12-15 uh, degree angle and drill all the holes on 12 inch centers. Now I'm just using a rubber mallet just to install the steel pipe. Um, like I'd said previously, I think the depth is around 2 inches. And again, you don't have to uh, really hit it that hard. Um, I'm just tapping it and you'll be able to tell once it bottoms out um, and then they all line up and, and that's pretty much it. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the piping uh, seems to be enough uh, as long as you keep the uh, spacing at 12 inches on center. That way you can't overload a shelf. Um, and the vertical supports were also at the, uh, at the same uh, dimension as the uh, horizontal uh, studs in the building, which I think were on like 40 inch centers. Um, so here I'm just using some, uh, I believe it was number one, number two rebar. I just kind of hammered in the ground and now I'm just sliding the, uh, the half inch pipe, still pipe over the rebar. Uh, it just makes it easier for when I go, uh, go back to paint it. Um, I can paint it and uh, let it set up. Uh, I think the uh, paint that I used was a bare um, flat black with primer um, and it's you know a paint that you can find at the big box stores and uh, that seemed to work out uh, real well for, for me in this project. Then the uh, superintendent came by to uh, inspect my work. Um, as you probably know in a previous video I was kicked off of the uh, staining crew um, so uh, anytime I do staining or painting uh, the supervisor always comes by and uh, makes sure I'm doing it right and if not uh, I'm quickly replaced. Here are the vertical supports and you can see that they're on roughly 40 inch centers. Again, they're just they're just anchored right into the metal stud. Um, I've got the baseboard installed and I also have some trim I had to install at the uh, T111 joint. Um, but everything looks good and I'm starting to uh, go ahead and put in the uh, steel pipe. Now all the steel pipe uh, is installed. You can kind of see it's pretty much complete. Um, it looks real nice and it's ready for uh, some hardwood. So I think that's going to be next. I can start uh, bringing back in the lumber and, and installing the, uh, the hardwood that I've got on the lumber rack. And I'll show you the empty lumber rack before and after. Okay, so this is the, uh, the completed lumber rack. Um, as you know, I used the existing lumber rack uh, that was in place. I just uh, painted the uh, steel pipe. Uh, those steel pipes are, I believe, 15 inches long. They're half inch in diameter, and uh, I believe they're installed at a, at a 12 degree um, angle. So now I'm gonna start uh, bringing back in the hardwood and start filling it up. Well, what can I say? I mean, there's nothing prettier uh, than having a nice organized uh, wood rack. You can see here on the end of the boards, I've kind of cut most of the ends just to give me a, a fresh end so I'm able to uh, label each board. And basically what I'm putting on here is the species of the wood, the length and the width. Um, that's pretty much all the information I need. Um, the thickness of the board, I can just whip out a tape measure and, and measure the thickness. Um, but for the most part, it's just the species, the width, and the length. 
And as you can see, it turned out really well. Well, that's going to wrap up this video on how to install a wood rack in the workshop. I hope this video was useful to you. I hope it helps you in your project. Get out there and create, build, and inspire, and as always, pay it forward. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. I'm Rick, and this is the Ingrain Workshop, signing out. We'll see you next week.